Jeff, what more can you tell us? Well, Laura, it's never a good idea to make too much out of a player not attending voluntary workouts, but this is certainly one to watch right now. Cortland Sutton is not scheduled to attend voluntary workouts as he seeks a new contract. Specifically interesting because he does have two years remaining on his deal, and he's going to make decent money next year in the form of $13 million, but only $2 million of that is guaranteed, and that's the only remaining guaranteed money that we're talking about here. So Sutton looking for some long-term security at this point. We'll see if he shows up once things become mandatory. The Commanders hosting multiple players, including their top five quarterbacks, with the second overall pick. There is a lot of people who think that the Commanders will, in fact, go quarterback at that spot. Now, this is an interesting one by GM Adam Peters, who's taking a page out of his previous role with the 49ers, where John Lynch would host multiple players at a time to see how they would all kind of get along. But certainly keep an eye on that one as well. Now, we talked about not making too big of a deal out of voluntary workout absences, but this is a big one because of the players involved. CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons, neither of which are expected to attend those voluntary workouts. CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons really seeking a similar deal here. The number that we're still watching for both guys is $30 million. That's what wide receivers at the top end of the spectrum are trying to go after right now, both in slightly different situations because CeeDee Lamb coming up on a contract year while Parsons is coming up. Uh, he still has a couple years left, but he wants to get paid now and get that long-term security. Yeah, they're they're going to have to shell that money out. We're getting to the Cowboys in just a second, but I did want to add another visit that Adam Schefter just tweeted out. Alabama offensive tackle J.C. Latham visiting tonight and Wednesday with the New York Jets. They've been hosting some big names here lately. Brock Bowers earlier in the week. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys. After another early exit in the playoffs, Jerry Jones stated that he planned to, quote, go all in this offseason to improve the team, but that hadn't been the case so far. As the Cowboys' only significant addition was linebacker Eric Kendricks. Dallas nice. lost several players yeah. in free agency, including pass rusher Dorrance Armstrong, running back Tony Pollard, and a pair of starters on the offensive line. Here's what Stephen Jones had to say about going all in. Everybody uh, can have their own definition of what that means, but I've never not known us to be all in, nor have I known anybody we compete against not to be all in. Doesn't mean it happens overnight, but when you're wanting to sign uh, players like Dak and, and Micah and CD, then, uh, you know, that certainly uh, you have to hold money back if you want to have a realistic chance at signing those guys. That was so interesting and revealing. I mean, it's no secret. We know they have to pay Dak, CD, Micah, but he's basically saying we don't have money for other things. Matt Jones mentioned the Cowboys held off on the, the spending and free agency. So there are some big holes in this team. What can they do in the draft to try to address those holes? They have a lot of holes. It's shocking when you actually look at this roster. The graphic there shows just how many players they lost, and that doesn't even include, like, areas of attrition where players just haven't stepped up or you mm. have to worry about the age of some guys. Now is the time. Dallas has to hit in this draft or this allure of the Cowboys is this perennial contender should be gone after this year if they don't hit this draft. I mean, they don't have a number two receiver. They don't have a left tackle. They don't have a center. They don't have a running back. That's just on offense where we're talking about you want to support Dak Prescott. Now is the time when you have this veteran quarterback draft young offensive playmakers who are inexpensive that can grow and develop with him. So they, they have holes at every position. I mean, outside of quarterback, the Dallas Cowboys could select any position in the first round of the NFL draft. And we would have to applaud it because they just need best player available. Most importantly, though, they need guys who could come in and play right away because they haven't made moves in free agency there are still some veterans out there that sure you could plug those guys in, but these are one year, maybe two year type band-aids if you're signing guys after the draft markets to where like now's the time, guys. This is a front office that historically does draft very well, but the cupboard is starting to get bare. This is the year where they have to have a big time draft. No, nah, man, you, everything you're saying is on point. And the other thing is you can't be all in and you don't have a Super Bowl roster. And I don't give a damn who you draft. You ain't going to have a Super Bowl roster from that either based on what other teams have done. See, this is what gets lost when we start talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, they will make moves, but guess what? The other people are making moves in the NFL as well who are ahead of them mm. based on what they've done in free agency over the past couple of years, based on what they've done in the draft. We just saw the Philadelphia Eagles lock up their receiver along with A.J. Brown, who they brought over in free agency. We've seen the work that the New York Jets have done 
We've seen the work that all of these teams that have had a tremendous amount of success do not only in free agency, but also with drafting well. So therein lies the problem. You want to talk about the Chiefs and how great Patrick Mahomes is? Let's talk about how great Brett Veach has been with drafting young players and getting them to yeah. contribute to Super Bowl championships right away. So Dallas is not only banking on the draft going well, they're banking on their three stars that they are trying to sign their quarterback with performing better when the playoffs start. Because that is what, what the ultimate conversation is always about. In the past, rosters have been better. They've underperformed when it was the most on the line. So we'll see what they do in the draft. And to your point, Matt, they've drafted great. Like they've hit on majority of the guys that they've drafted, yeah. not just in the first round. So you can't kill them for that. That's what you can example. kill them for is not going out and locking up free agents that may put them over the top yeah. for a Super Bowl opportunity as opposed to getting to the round one or round two in the playoffs and being exited. Well, and Marcus, you mentioned that intense scrutiny is going to be on, on them in the playoffs, and you wonder the, the roster could be worse than it has been in previous years, but yet they're still expected to make the playoffs, and it's all on Dak. The Cowboys haven't reached the conference championship game since the 1995 season, and just in case you're wondering, Swagu was 12 years old then. That's how long it's been. Okay, on, I'm sorry. See, we didn't have I to didn't do that. that. That was we our didn't researcher, have to put Ryan. That in there, man. Okay, um, still ahead Jesus, here on I'm NFL still Live. A fan that was of mean them. of me. I'm sorry.